Hi, welcome to our 2017 porcupine search. We're going to be searching these woods of the Arboretum in Guelph. It has one of the highest population of porcupine in, in Ontario. And I don't like know, to... I don't know if that's true, man. Yeah. Uh, probably not, but it has porcupines, that's for sure. Excellent. So uh, join us, please, as we take this journey into, into the forest and hopefully find one. Thank you. So, try not to slip here. So yeah, you know, we're just in the uh, Arboretum. And uh, what's the temperature right now? I'm arguing that it's minus nine, but these guys say it's like plus two or zero. Yeah, fine, maybe not minus nine centigrade, but, but yeah, we're just walking and we're hoping we might find some live porcupines. Believe it or not, I myself have never seen a live porcupine, at least not a wild one. I do often come across them while driving dead on the side of the road. It would it'd be really nice to see a live animal at some point, so yeah. We brought some tracks here. Looks to be either human or maybe a Sasquatch, but with shoes. <laughs> They're probably human, I'm, I'm thinking by the size of them, so let's keep going. Where would they, where would they be? See anything there, Gabe? Uh, I just see something weird on top of that stump, but I think it's just a piece of wood. Yeah, it is. I thought we had our first sighting there. We were really excited. It turned out to be a squirrel's nest. Common <laughs> misunderstanding. <laughs> it happens all the time. We're getting close. I can feel it. Oh, we'll definitely be coming back here in the spring to film some of the frogs and other amphibians. Hopefully some salamanders. It should be very, very interesting. Why, tally ho, there be a porcupine yonder. Really? Porcupine no way. He has never not found a porcupine. Is that so? According to his statistics, which I do believe. Oh here. wow, that is so sick. It's huge. So, this is just really impressive. I'm the porcupine king. <laughs> All right. So high up. Don't worry. So he is up there. Right there, that little thing. And I'm going to whip out my camcorder to get some better footage for us here. So, along with the quills, they have like a coat as well, right? Yeah, they have a really thick coat. So I, you can, I mean, like the dark part is the coat, and then the quills are the lighter part. Uh, um, yeah. And it's up there probably feeding on pine cones and bark. Very cool. In the winter, generally, yeah. Sounds like a pretty delicious meal. Little film on film. Now you can see the behind the scenes, as you can see. Uh, so yep, hard with, work here. With a selfie stick, gives us a good perspective. So we got a, we got quite a bit of different uh, technology being used in the making of this video. Gabriel's probably taking some pristine photography. You want me to film film with this? Oh, that would be sick. If you want to. We don't even need this camera if he's gonna be doing that. Or this camera. So Gabe, can you tell us? Here's a, a bit snowman. Of why? Oh it may be a good idea or why looking for the porcupines in trees tends to be the thing to do in the winter well generally they have dens where you can find them um, where they'll like rest and stuff but up in the trees they're really easy to find especially in the winter because there's no leaves so you can just see them and they're pretty obvious they're just a big, big dark blob <laughs> and uh, they have a pretty high level of fidelity to what are considered the good food trees. Mm -hmm. So, um, like I know in the Appalachian forest in the US, they'll have, out of every thousand suitable trees, they'll utilize about 10. So they have a really strong attraction to the trees that they consider the best for food. There's no coyote down here. It's got hair Fair. in it, so. All right, boys, let's, let's get real here. 
We need to find ourselves a porcupine. We found one. Another one. One of the biggest I've ever seen. Another porcupine. Who are you, DJ uh, Khaled? Another one. You gotta be happy seeing one porcupine, man. Oh, I definitely am. That's a double nut hatch if I've ever seen Two at a time, I get the belt. So we were just walking and we noticed a little object blurry and just scurry off the trail. And lo and behold, it's a shrew. Just hanging out in the winter cold. Hello, little guy. Oh, Raven. Do y'all hear me just have a conversation with a raven? Yeah, it's pretty awesome. Yeah, I speak for the trees. How's your kids and why? So we got some snow fleas here. Yeah, I'll give you that. Uh, Half I'm decent using a butt, right? It jumped away. Every time. Every time I like focus in on one, it's hopping away. They know they're on camera, they're shy. <laughs> These are Hypogastra nivicola. They're a freeze-resistant springtail species. Okay. They're uh, pretty common up here, and they'll pretty much be above ground whenever they're uh, whenever it's warm out. They're actually being studied by scientists because they want to figure out what the antifreeze proteins are because they think they might be able to use it to make like a way to preserve um, human organs so that we can use them for longer after the person, like so we don't have to like keep them alive. That is. Very cool. Yeah, they're super interesting little guys. Ooh. 